say work. That's our message today, work. Don't sound so excited. <laughs> work. I want to show you some work memes uh, here on, on the screen. Going to work. <laughs> when I first started. I actually thought of Pastor Kristen on this one. That's not funny. That's not funny. Very true. Very true. Now, that was my wife's favorite. That was my wife's favorite. <laughs> Not funny. Not funny. <laughs> Come on, IKEA fans. And that's not funny either. Um, so as we talk about work today, I've actually been so excited to share with you, both in the room and online, some principles about work. This, this is something that most people do a lot of, and yet very little messages in church are ever talked about, uh, few songs are ever written about, and yet you will spend a big chunk of your life doing what we are talking about today, and that's called work. And I think we should talk about it. And I think we should discuss. And so I'm really looking forward to the next 20 or 30 minutes of talking about work. One of the things that I want to do just at the very onset is we're going to talk about your job. Although I would call mine a calling, some of you would call it a job. Sometimes We've had people, even in the last few weeks, sometimes they'll tell me in the lobby, people will walk in, who's speaking today? What? Well, we, and then they'll walk back out. Very interesting. You would think once you go through getting here, you would stay, and we're not here for Ethan or Kristen or Micah. We're here for God. But just general reminder to all of us of why we come in the first place. Um, yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, no one clapped, but uh, I thought it was good. When we talk about work, I think it's very important for all of us at the onset to realize how blessed we are. That we don't just immediately go into like, oh, work. Well, there's a lot of people in the world that wish they had the work you have. If your household, if your household makes over $40,000 combined a year, you are 1.72% of the world. You're less than 2%. And so when you begin, you say, well, I just make 30 or I make 20, you're still in the top 5 and 10%. So instead of almost cursing 
instead of almost cursing what you have, I think it's very important that you realize it's a blessing, actually. It's a blessing that you turn a light switch and it actually comes on, that you turn a key and something starts and you're not walking seven miles, 12 miles. Like you shouldn't always look at your life and be like, it sucks, it stinks. Actually, it's a blessing. Actually, it's a blessing. And I think all of us should appreciate the blessings that we have, that we shouldn't be unthankful, that we shouldn't be ungrateful. We should be, we should be appreciative. The other thing that I would say at the start, because I'm going to predominantly talk a lot about you as an employer, a worker, but one thing that my pastor says that I think is very helpful to all of us, and I've shared this with some business leaders, and one of them actually told me again this morning that they use this all the time. They, they use this example or analogy all the time uh, in their business. I'm always, I'm always honored when I hear those things. You know, I, not, not that I would want to embarrass someone, but even you know, someone like a Jim Jackson or uh, Delee, if she's in the room at Baker's, when, when people will tell me, you know, Pastor, I took your message and I used it in staff meeting or I, or I used it with some of my employees that week at work, the principal, the it's always an honor that you can take something and by the time you get in your car you haven't forgot about it already, uh, that, that you can actually take it and apply it to your everyday life. But here's the analogy. The analogy is this, that a lot of people in life, so let me talk just through the lens of an employer, that people wear different hats. So for you, you might have a hat of spouse, you may have a hat of parent, you may have a hat of city council worker, you may have a hat of volunteer, you know, little league coach, you may have the hat of an employee, you have a lot of different hats. The same principle applies, the same principle applies to the person you're working for. So I will share just through my perspective, okay? So I'm not your boss. Uh, there, there's a few in the room that I would be. I'm not not your boss in the room or online in general, but here, here's, here's something maybe that would help you. So if it was me, the first hat that I would wear here at StorySide is this, is, this is the baseball hat I wear for my boy who hit his first triple at his 8 a.m. game today. And they won 18 to five. Um, so th th this first hat that I could wear here would be the hat of pastor. Now, this hat, this hat could actually cause people even close to me to say, Pastor Micah, I, I think the pastor side is get, getting the best of you, and you are being so gracious, and you are being so kind. I mean, I will have people that have worked for me or work with me currently that will say that, Pastor Micah, your pastor heart is getting the best of you, and you are wanting to extend grace so far to people but I can't help it, that's the pastor side of me. So when I sing, leave the 99 and go get the one, or I preach about the prodigal coming back, let's have a party, let's dance today, I really mean all of that. And so, you know, for years I've prayed, people that other churches don't want, they're welcome to come here. Uh, I'm totally fine with God giving us what I would have prayed the crumbs uh, to come here. So this, this hat, this hat, is going to love and walk to walk and pray this room when it's completely empty and touch chairs and say, God, I don't know who's going to sit here tomorrow. Like, I wouldn't have known this week in here. I wouldn't have known that Mark and, and Dean and them would be sitting third row in from the back right there. Like, I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known Hank and Sue and Caleb are sitting back here. I don't, Faye in the third row and continuing to deal with the grief. Just had the anniversary of, of your husband passing and we prayed outside you know, the other day, I wouldn't have known you're in that third row. When I walk these rows and I'm just praying, Rusty, God bless every chair, God bless every person. I don't know if it's a single mom, but we have a, 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 a single mom just this week dealing with all of the juggling of what comes. I don't know who's sitting in what chairs. Pastor Ethan and I Monday met a lady at Bob Evans uh, who attends here. She works four jobs. She's working four jobs right now and said that she canceled her Facebook so she would have time to read 10 pages of the Bible every day. Shout out to that. That's amazing. That's amazing. 
but I don't, I don't know where everyone's sitting, but, but the pastor hat, like I would wear this hat. If I was wearing a hat in those prayer times, I would wear this hat, like God bless every marriage in here, and God, I believe, and, and that would be this hat. This, this is the hat that is going to grieve so deeply at funeral homes with you, that is going to hug and get so emotional when you are having your wedding moments, when I'm part of, and I, I'm always reminded of, of baby birth, so many of you in the room, but, but Dr. Megan, I could never have that taken away from me, the times that I've been a part of, those moments where your family has grown, and you know, even your brother the one night, it's midnight, it's midnight, Chevy Chase, there's flowers and balloons, and I'm sitting on the couch, and, and we're you know, celebrating birth, it's midnight, those moments will never be taken away with this hat. This is the pastor hat. The thing, the thing is that, that I, also, I also have this hat. Now we have 21 people on staff, part-time or full-time, 21 staff. Th this hat here, this hat here is, is the boss hat. The boss. Uh, no, this is, this is the boss hat. How, how many just by a show of hands, whether currently or at some point in your life, you've been a boss, a, a manager, a boss, just raise your hand. Take a look around, 9 a.m. crowd. We got boss hats for everybody. Um, here, here's, the, here's the unique thing about the boss hat is, you know, the boss hat, and I'm sure, Hank, you, you've had several hundred employees before. The, the boss hat has to make a lot of decisions and choices that the hat of love and grace and mercy, if we switch back to this hat, this hat can agonize. This hat's like, oh man, I hate to transition them. This hat is like, what are they going to do? They have kids. They, they, they just bought a house. Like, like this hat, whether it's church or the secular world, this hat here. So I don't want to embarrass people again, but I had a business owner sit with me about a week or two ago, was looking at transitioning three people and they were so upset about transitioning those three people that I almost thought they were going to give themselves ulcers. Like they were that worked up about, like, how in the world am I going to transition someone? I know you think, you know, as an employee sometimes that they just, like, walk in and like, you're out of here, jerk. There, there are a lot of good people. There are a lot of good people that put a boss hat on that on the other side of that, they actually are a good person who has a lot of kindness and grace and mercy in their heart. And if they only wore this hat all the time, if all they did was put on the hat of love or grace or caring, they would never let anyone go. They wouldn't transition. They wouldn't have a courageous conversation with anyone. There are times that you have to put, you have to put this hat on and you have to make decisions that a lot of people don't agree with. I, I've transitioned people here before where I put this hat on, and I've had people quit the church over it. I've had people leave the church. How can he get rid of him? How can he get rid of her? How? Well, you, number one, you don't know the whole story, so you may hear pieces or parts. You don't know the whole story. I have never, I have never transitioned anyone where there wasn't so much communication, prayer, getting input and advice. Sometimes you have to put this hat on whether people like it or not. I know the world always wants you to wear this hat, but sometimes you have to put this hat on. This is the boss hat. This is the boss hat. My pastor says this hat here, this hat here, this is a Montreal Expos flat brim for all the people who like to trash me, like, don't wear flat brim. This is, I just had to put one on for you today. Like, I'm quitting this church. Uh, this is Montreal Expos. I graduated in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And I used to go sit in the outfield for a dollar uh, and watch the Expos back in the late 80s. This, this hat here, David, this hat here is the business leader hat. This is the business leader hat. So this hat could be confused with boss hat, but they're actually different. The, bo the boss hat, I could put the boss hat on and be like, hey guys, I need you here at 9 o'clock. I could put the boss hat on and say, hey, hey, I don't want that happening again. I, some of you could freak out sometimes. I'm just being honest with you. Some of you could freak out because you are so used to seeing Micah in the pastor hat. Like, whoa, I thought he was up praying for people in the prayer lines. I thought he loved everyone. I do love everyone when I have this hat on. I really do. But there are some times you have to put this hat on. 
and you have to be the boss. Now here's the danger. The danger is if I put this hat on and I talk to someone with this hat on as the boss and you quit the church because you're like, I thought you loved me. I thought you cared about my family. I actually do. I do care about your family and I do have grace. But right now, we all need this hat. This hat, this business leader hat, this hat is more about budgets, monies, this hat. This hat isn't even about are you willing to come at 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock. This isn't even about are you willing to stay 10 or 12 hours. This hat is about right now with the economy or with money or with budget or where we are right now, we cannot continue this ministry. We cannot continue to send all this money here or there. Right now, we can't do it. The money is not there. This has to equal this. And so this decision is not based on, it's not based on pastor hat because I love you. And it's not based on boss hat because you're not doing your job. You actually could be doing your job. So if you get upset and storm out of your job, you storm out like, I was doing a good job. I can't believe. Maybe you were doing a good job. Maybe this has nothing to do with if you were doing a good job. Maybe this has to do with at that particular time of the company, there was something going on where they had to make it make money sense and someone had to put a business leader hat on and say, you know what, for the sake of budget and the sake of money, we are laying people off. And if you confuse that in that moment they were wearing one of those two hats, you'll be bitter, you'll be mad, you'll be upset. Ten years later, you'll still be talking about, I can't believe they, here is why they done it. It had nothing to do with if they loved you and it had nothing to do with if you're doing your job. They had to make a tough decision and you don't want to confuse the three hats. So... If that will help someone, I hope it does, because I meet a lot of people, not, not just story side, I meet a lot of people that are, are bitter, you're angry, you're resentful, and I think you're just confusing the hats. I think you're confusing the hats. So if both parties, I, I'm, I'm trying to do better at this, I think if both parties, whether it's story side, but more specifically, we're talking about your job, if both people were able to understand, now which hat are you wearing right now? Come on, I want to help you today. Like, which, which hat are you wearing right now? If both parties understand which hat is being worn, then I think a lot of our feelings won't get hurt as much. So I want to help you today. In, in our lifetime, and some studies are higher than this, but the average person spends 90,000 hours at work over their lifetime. That's psychology today. The U.S. Census says each year that the average American spends over 100 hours commuting. I just want to press pause. I see Pastor Matt here in the front who's like podcast, you know, guru right now, just podcast, podcast, podcast. Yesterday, I drove three hours. I listened to three podcasts yesterday. So I, I just, this is not my message, but I just want to encourage you. When I read numbers like that, that's a lot of time. Don't, don't just look at your commuting as wasted time. Look at it as worship time. Look at it as prayer time. Pastor, I have no time to pray. You, you probably do. You probably do. Maybe it's in some of these windows that you could be getting the word in you, getting worship in you. 80% of people are dissatisfied with their jobs. That's Deloitte's uh, survey, the, the number one company in the world for studying those businesses and companies. 80% of people are dissatisfied with their job. 76% uh, percent are putting money as the leading cause of stress in their life, the American Psychological Association. So it's no wonder when songs come out, it's no wonder when songs come out like Johnny Paycheck saying, take this job and shove it. Uh, it's, no, it's no wonder that it could, it could make millions and sell millions and movies come out of that because if you have those high in numbers who are dissatisfied with their job, of course they're going to feel that way. Like, shove it. When, when, Dolly Parton, uh, when Dolly Parton would sing, and, and I was just, even this week studying, drawn back to this one line of, of, she said, it'll drive you crazy if, and this is really important, it'll drive you crazy if you, if you let it. 
So don't just say, this job drives me crazy. That boss drives me crazy. That employee drives me crazy. No, it'll drive you crazy if, if you let it. You don't, you don't have to let it drive you crazy. Let's look at a couple of verses of Scripture uh, that I think will, will help you today. Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. To work it and to take care of it. To work it and to take care of it. Final verse, Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, work heartily. As for the Lord and not for men. As for the Lord and not for men. Some points that I want to leave you with that I believe could, could help you today is the first one is just worth. 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 Can we say that word together? Worth. He puts them in the garden to work it and take care of it. To work it and to take care of it. To work it and to take care of it. Do you even see the worth in your workplace? Like, do you even imagine what this area would be like without fill in the blank? Fill in the blank. Where, where do you, you work at Avita? So what would it be like? I don't need like the Ohio Health be like, it'd be a better place. That's what it'd be, Rick Fisher. Uh, just kidding. Uh, just kidding. Do, do you even see the worth in your workplace? Like, like is, it just, is it just drying off a, a car chance at the, at the elite car wash, Adam, and, and, and different ones, and, and Hank and there? Like, when you're going in there and you're working, is it just drying a car off? Is it a paycheck? Is it like, well, I got 16 hours, I got 22 hours? Or, or, or do you see the worth in your work, which I know you do, but do you see the worth in your work of, you know what, I, I, I think it, it looks better when cars are clean. <laughs> I actually think it looks more excellent. God's blessed us with a vehicle. Not everyone in the world has one, and I'm going to take care of the one I have. Or you, you've told me before, you've actually had moments where you've even encouraged people and pray, prayed, with, prayed with the person. Go, Do you see worth in your work? If you don't see worth in your work, if you don't see worth in your work, then right, I mean, like the ABCs of this whole message if you don't go into your job feeling like you are making a difference in the world and you don't even see the worth in your work, it's going to be hard for you to value what I'm talking about today. Because the worth in your work is going to be tied very closely to the worth you see in you. The worth you see in you. That God doesn't just have you. Do you think God has you on the planet for a paycheck? Like he's going to go through all of this so you can pay your bills? Like so you're not like looking at caller ID? Like, you know, it was actually funny. The other day, you know, I, I was talking to a family and, and their kid had their phone. Yeah, never mind. Um, it was funny, but I'm not going to share it with you. <laughs> See me after. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> But, but do you see the worth in you? Do you, feel, do you feel like what you're doing is making a difference? Worth. Do they see your worth? Do they see your worth? If you weren't in the room, if you weren't on the line, if you weren't on the job, would you even be missed? Well, I want to help you today. I wish I had another hour. Would you even be missed? Would people be like, wow, she was the most bubbly person. He was the most encouraging guy. You know what? If I could trust anyone with the money, it would have been them. They were the one that always came early and was willing to leave late. Or, or would they be like, good riddance? Do they see your worth? When you go into that company... When you go into that company, in your mind, are you doing them a favor? Or do you walk in thinking, I'm thankful for an opportunity? There's a big difference in that. Do you go in thinking, I'm doing them a favor? They, they better be glad I'm here today. This thing wouldn't be running without me. Or does it ever cross your mind that at one point, 
Someone either put a lien on their house or a lien on their life insurance or they had a dream. They went to five banks and banks were like, no, we're not giving you a loan. And this, this person, whoever it was, went the second and third and fourth mile trying to even open this company, open this business so that you and others could even have a job. And it's not always about walking in like, oh, I'm here. I'm doing you a favor. No, you're walking in because someone gave you an opportunity. Not only worth, but, but whatever. Whatever. You, you read it with me. Whatever. Re whatever. We, we read it in Colossians 3. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. If we are not careful, and, I, and I've shared this before in a separate message with the water to wine message, but, but it still bears repeating that if we are not willing to do whatever, you can't say you're out of work and then give me the 10 things you're not going to do. Like, I can't find a job, but I'm not working. I'm not taking third shift. Are you crazy, Micah? I'm not doing that. You, you think I'm going to, I'm not walking out there with someone's plate of food. You know how embarrassing that is? You can't say you're out of work if you're not willing to do whatever. I think whatever's an important thing. I, I've, I've said this before, but just let, just let me reiterate it. I think more marriages would work if people were willing to do whatever. I'm not going to counseling. I'm not going to forgive them. Well, then you're not willing to do whatever. You, you, can't, you, can't say, you can't say, I want to advance. I want success. I want to grow, but I'm not willing to do whatever. You're not going to go into your employer or boss's room or into a conversation and start telling him, like, I really want to advance, but I'm not doing that, and I'm not doing that, and don't expect that, and I'm not asking for a show of hands from business owners or business leaders, but I, but I would almost guarantee the fact that they are drawn to people who's willing to do whatever. You need me to read a book? You need me to get more training? Do I need to go somewhere to learn that? I, I don't know how to do it, but I'll figure it out. They are drawn to people who says, listen, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, hey, I'm your guy, I'm your girl. Whatever it takes, I will figure it out. I'll get it done, whatever. Everyone say whatever. Ecclesiastes would say whatever your hand finds to do, do it with not just some of your might or most of your might. Do it with all of your might. You know, from a young age, I have four kids. From a young age, we will actually say things like, if you want it, I want this. I want. Well, if you want it, you're going to have to work for it. But then as we get older, we change that mindset. Like, if you want it, give it to me. No, that's not, how it, that's not how it is. We told you little. If you want it, I, I know we, we're like older now, we're like want it so I'm going to win it in the lottery. I want it so I'm going to scratch it off. I, I want it so you're going to work and give it to me. But that's not how it's supposed to be. Whatever your hand finds to do, if you're willing to do whatever and you will work it, there are blessings that will come to people who are willing Willing to work. One of the dangers, one of the dangers is that we create a mindset that's almost like, I'm just specialized work. I'm just specialized work. The, the, the message today is not about the church per se, but people will, people will come here and they'll say, just so you know, I'm just a, and they'll fill in the blank. I'm just an elder. I'm just... Most of those people, I couldn't think of one person that I've ever hired or ever put in a leadership position that just tells me I'm only willing to do this. I, I think God is drawn, God is drawn to people that are willing to do whatever. When he's writing to the church in Corinth, the writer put this in, in Thessalon uh, actually it was Thessalonica chapter 3 verse 10. Pastor Matty actually said they were unwilling to work. It's such, such an amazing scripture. He said they were unwilling to work. They were unwilling to work. And so, as we close the message today, in your mind, you could, you could have come to the service today or, or logged on and you could be thinking, well, if they would pay me more or 
or if they would change, or if they, what if in this service today you switched your thinking from my life is going to be dependent on them, like if they pay, and if they do, and if they, and what if you just put it back on you and say, when I walk out of these doors today, God lit a fire in my soul that I'm willing to do whatever, I'm going to go the second mile, I'm going to work, and I'm going to see what God could do with my best. It's hard to expect God to do his best when you're only doing half, right? What if your now is setting up your next? What if your now is setting up your next? Like, I just hate standing out here. I just hate working the front desk. I just hate working on this shift. If you read the Bible, whether it's David, whether it's Joseph, or the next hundred stories, it's usually that they were doing something and someone noticed it. Someone's like, hey, have you ever noticed that one guy? Have you ever seen them? Do, do you know their work ethic? What if you're now? You think what you're doing right now is like, why did I get stuck here? But you're only one look, one view, one person away from saying, wow, if you want a hard worker, if you want someone willing to do whatever, boy, do I ever have a lady that is perfect for that what if your now is trying to set up your next but you're too busy pouting and complaining and mad and upset that you're not even giving God a chance wholeheartedly whatever you do in work the Bible said give it all your heart wholeheartedly you can't have a million dollar dream and a minimal work ethic it's rare that you're going to give a little and get a lot. I don't have time to get into all the studies on sleep deprivation and social media. But you can't be out till 12 and 1 and 2 and 3 o'clock. You can't be out to all hours of the night. Go into work half asleep, half focused, and then be like, God, I just can't catch a break. Like maybe you, need to, maybe you need to say, God, give me more wisdom. What could I do with a good night's rest? What could I do with a clear mind? It's not even about an applause thing. Well, I, I've been so fired up. I was praying for each one of you. As I'm mowing last night, I was so into what I was going to share today. I want to help you today. I would love if five or ten years from now, someone would come back and say, Pastor Micah, thank you for sharing that about work. It changed my mind, and I was able to view life a totally different way. Don't, don't give half-hearted effort and yet want God like, give me the whole blessing. It's not, it's not how it works. So we get ready to pray, does God go to work with you? Does God go to work with you? Or do you just come here for God? I, I can't tell you how many times that I will drive around town, my kids will shout out. We have these decals at, at the Connect Center, and people will put them on their cars. It's amazing. It could be a mall, a store, a restaurant. It could be even further away, distance-wise. And my kids are always like, Dad, there's a story side. It's not just the decal. It could be your devotion. It could be your language. It could be your love. But the question is, does God go to work with you? See, if you don't believe that you're on assignment, you're just going to see this as dollars and cents. Well, I got a 25 cent raise. Well, I got a. That, that's awesome. But I already ask you are you only on this planet for a paycheck? Is that, is that how you view this? Or do you really understand that you are the salt? Salt, on, on a lot of levels, is not just seasoning. If you study salt, for the most part, salt is a preservation against things that are decaying. In a decaying world, ethics, morality, thievery, stealing, dishonesty, you walk into your job, not me, In a world that could look at it as, well, I'm going to work if the boss is looking, but if he's not looking, you walk in and you're like, not me, because I'm not even working for man. I'm working for the Lord, and the Lord sees everything. Work heartily as unto the 
He sees my work. I just wish someone around here would notice everything I'm doing. He does. He notices what you're doing. Come on, soul to the earth. Does God go to work with you? See, if we're, if we're expecting, Aaron, if we're expecting StorySide to reach every coworker, if we're expecting StorySide to reach every teammate, what is honestly 337,000 people in this region, what are the chances of StorySide getting everyone into this room? If you were thinking business today, wouldn't it be a much wiser proposition to say, instead of wanting everyone, all of your workers and teammates to get in here, how about you get the Holy Spirit and boldness and confidence and you go there. You want some sold in Walmart? Here's some sold in Walmart. You want some at Thermodisc? Here's some at Thermodisc. You want some at the Elite Car Wash? Here's some at the Elite Car Wash. Let's go. Let's go. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every school, every company, every subdivision. Come on, you are the salt of the earth. It's not just a job. You're on assignment. It's not just a paycheck. You are called. You are the light of the world. Come on, you are the light of the world. Stand all over the room with me if you would. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Get your dream back. Get your dream back. Get your dream back. You're on assignment. It's not just a job. Is that you, Hunter? One, two, three, four. Hunter, you're on assignment. Yesterday, I spent hours with Nicholas all day. There was a bunch of guys. They're asking me questions about church. They're asking me questions about some preachers on TV. I'm not just saying this. They raved about you like he's so special. He's one of a kind. He's Hunter. You're on assignment. It's not just about, well, they're sending him to Pennsylvania today. He's out of town. I know it's not always easy. But the point of the matter is, if you start viewing this, I'm on assignment. Who, who am I going to meet in a hotel lobby today? Who needs to hear about Jesus? For, for some of you, you may not even like go in like, I'm not asking you to be a religious freak, like walk in, quote in scripture, like, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I'm not asking you to do that. <laughs> Maybe it's a smile. Maybe it's holding open a door. Maybe it's giving grace. Maybe it's being trustworthy. But you're on assignment. You're on assignment. Driving down the road in my truck the other day, and Ellie's like, she loves Cupcake Wars and Cake Boss and all this stuff, and she's, she's like, Dad, I know this could never happen. It actually got my attention. It's the first thing she said, like, Dad, I know this could never happen. I said, what's that, honey? What could never happen? She's like, well, I would, I would love to be on that show, or I would love to make cakes or cupcakes. I, I, would, I would love to do that in my life, but I know it could never happen. How many people in this room today is thinking, I would love a raise, but I know it could never happen. I would love for God to give me another open door, but I know it could never happen. I'd love to write a book or something, but I know it could never happen. I'd love one day to go to college, I know it could never happen. Listen, I'm not trying to make you a false promise, but I'm telling you in Scripture, when people were willing to do whatever and gave their whole heart to something, and said, God, my whole life, everything I have, I give it to you. There is story after story after story of how God used person after person. And some of them didn't know everyone and have all the right connections, but God saw. Work heartily as unto, take a look, Jesus. Would you be willing to tell him that today about your work ethic? Take a look, Jesus. Your second mile mindset, take a look, Jesus. If you're looking for someone, hey, right here, as you close your eyes today, I want to pray over you. I want to pray that you'll be the light and salt that he's called you to be. I want to pray that you'll have your dream back, that you won't go through life saying, I know it can't happen, I know it won't happen. But even right now in this holy moment, that you'll start believing, no, it can happen. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength.
Eyes closed, no one looking around. The greatest dream you'll ever get back, the greatest belief you'll ever get back is if you've lost your belief in Christ, maybe you've never believed in God before. The greatest work is not even a company or a factory. The greatest work is what Jesus done on the cross. We call it the finished work. We call it the finished work of Calvary. Maybe you're here today for Coworker Sunday and you just want Jesus to come into your life and into your heart. And before we get to your job, you just want to thank him for what he done for you on a cross. Whether it's the first time ever that you've raised a hand to say, Preacher, would you pray that God would come into my life? Maybe for some of you, you want to ask him again. But if that's your prayer today, would you just raise a hand even right now and just say, Pastor Michael, would you pray for me today? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pastor Michael, would you pray for me? Thank you again, thank you. Thank you, sir. I want you to pray for me today. My second question as I get ready to pray is, if you're here today, and you would say, Pastor Mike, in all honesty, I've, I've lost my lost my ability to see that I'm on assignment. I've started viewing this too much as paycheck and jobs and I, I'm, I'm really not seeing it as salt and light but I want to today when you're talking I, I'm feeling it in my heart I want God to help me to see that I'm here on purpose and he has a plan for me if that's you just lift up a hand and say Pastor Mike would you pray for me today that I would understand I'm the salt of the earth I'm on assignment thank you I'm on assignment thank you on assignment. Thank you. God, I pray right now for every hand that was raised, for those that wanted to accept Jesus, for those that would say, I don't want to live my life on my own. I, I can't even figure it out. I need a Savior. I leave sin. I leave selfishness. I leave shame. And I turn to Jesus. God, I thank you for hearing their prayer today in this room and online. For those that raised the hand and said, I I want to know that I have a purpose in this life. I'm not just putting in time. God has a purpose for my life. I'm on an assignment. I, I can give a smile. I can hold open a door. I, I can show honor. I can be trustworthy. I, I can be honest. There's something I can do to make this world a better place. I'm willing not to just give half-hearted. I will give wholehearted. I will work as under the Lord. God, I thank you for stirring up a dream, stirring up a fire, stirring up a commitment today in people's hearts. And I pray these prayers in the amazing, powerful name of Jesus. It's not just 90,000 hours of work. It's assignment. It's assignment. It's assignment. And I pray those 90,000 hours would be for the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus and to make you famous, to make you famous. Thank you for stirring it up today. Amen and amen. Are you thankful for God's word today? Are you thankful for God's word? Come on, why don't we sing this song out to him? Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so honored to have this opportunity to share God's love and remarkable grace with you. Maybe as you have watched the message today, you have been challenged in your heart and you're really believing there is more. God wants to do something in your life and I would love for our team to pray with you right now. There's a number on the screen. Please take a moment, call that number. Let us pray with you that God will continue to give you the strength and give you the help as you move forward in your life. If you have prayed the prayer for Jesus to come into your heart to save you, we would love to give you a free book entitled Following Jesus. You can call that same number and we will send that book to you for free. Again, thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Each week, we receive calls from all over Ohio, places like Columbus, Cleveland, Youngstown, Akron, just to name a few. We hear these amazing stories of people's hope being restored, relationships with Christ being renewed, and people really just overall being refreshed by the message. Today, we're asking you, help StorySide help Ohio. Help us to help someone in your local community. You can do that today through your giving. You can give one of three ways. You can visit our website, storysidechurch.com. You can download our app for free, or you can text the word give to the number that's right here on your screen. Now, we don't have any way of being able to pay or give our way into heaven, but we can definitely help someone else get there.